Porter Gals presents Terrifying Tales. Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Allison. And we're the Polter Gals. Spooky. <laughs> From the book, Cotton Bells, Goatman, and Witches, Legends from the Heart of Texas, written by Bradley T. Turner, and published by TSTC. The Legend of Lindsay Hollow, Story 1. In the 19th century, a lynch mob, led by a wronged rancher, caught the infamous horse rustling Lindsay Brothers near the old Meridian and Bosqueville Roads. About 100 feet from the present-day Lindsay Hollow Road, near Cameron Park, and hung them from the gnarled branches of the large oak tree. Following this traditional Western justice, travelers along the road told stories of catching glimpses of the brothers, hearing their cries for help, seeing their silhouette sway in the tree. It is said that even now, on unlucky nights, the shadowy figures of the two brothers still hang and their tree of execution, the spurs from their boots clinking together from their dangling feet. The Poet A popular hotspot for spiritual activity, the Armstrong Browning Library at Baylor University is home to the ghost of Elizabeth Barrett Browning, the famous English poet. An active spirit, Browning often approaches visitors and employees alike at various times in the day. She appears barefoot in a lustrous white gown as she wanders the upstairs room, housing most of her books and personal effects, ranging from jewelry to a beautiful ornate wooden desk. Some believe she is there to protect her possessions. Others say she wanders the entire building at night, not just the one room, barefoot and dressed in white. The Cameron Park Witch, number one. Waco, Texas. The Cameron Park Witch was a single, half-Native American mother with one son who lived in a rundown shack not far from Two Street, Waco's former red light district. Not long after the public dedication of Cameron Park in 1910, the woman and her son frequented the park, venturing there both day and night. Over the following years, their trips grew longer and visitors began telling stories of the eccentric mother and her child, who wandered the forest chanting strange hymns to each other. The boy never attended school, and the mother appeared shaggy and unkempt with dirt on her face. By the height of World War I in 1917, the boy had grown into a young man, and the government drafted him to fight in the trenches. In the summer of 1918, locals reported seeing the woman wandering alone in the forest both day and night, waiting for her son to return. In mid-autumn, rumors of a possible ceasefire circulated, and the American home front waited with bated breath. However, during the first week of November, she received a telegram with tragic news, informing her of the worst. Her son would not be coming home. She then retreated entirely to her beloved forest of Cameron Park to cope with their grief. Park sightings of the woman increased after the death of her only son. Local residents occasionally called upon police to investigate the bizarre dealings with the savage native witch running a monk. But these encounters eventually dwindled. Some say the woman died. Others believe she moved to a new town. A few claimed tattered shreds of her clothing and personal effects were retrieved from the base of the cliffs along the banks of the Bosque. At night, you can occasionally hear mad chants and see her spirit running through the forest. The Revolving Chambers, Waco, Texas. At the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum, Visitors claim several of the firearms on display move on their own. Most of the stories involve several revolvers, chambers spinning, and then randomly cocking their hammers as if preparing to fire. 
at the museum, each firearm is affiliated with a specific officer who would likely use the gun in a hostile exchange or with a specific event, such as artifacts recovered from Bonnie Park and Clyde Barrow's death car after they were gunned down by the Texas Rangers, occasionally resulting in the death of a suspected criminal and internally tethering the spirit to that weapon. The Writer Across from the Waco Public Library at 1801 Austin Avenue stands the historic Cooper House, home of the city's Cooper Foundation. The house features ordinate gables, represents Waco's Central Victorian home. The house was constructed for Madison A. Cooper, Jr., a local businessman, philanthropist, and writer. Cooper wrote the now-famous and highly romanticized Serena, Texas, a 1,700-plus page, two-volume series drenched in scandal and based on Cooper's own Waco contemporaries. According to popular legend, Cooper's spirit still works in his upstairs office, the rotunda of the old house. The room is exactly as he left it, down to his spectacles just waiting for the writer to begin his next project. Sometimes, late at night, passerbys and workers at the mansion report seeing his office lights turn on, as if he is working late on another piece. The stairs leading to his high office creak randomly, day and night, and other odd noises, such as Cooper's mumbling voice, occasionally sound from the room. Others claim... He sometimes walks the house at night, as though looking for something never to be found. The Little Girl from St. Mary's In West, few legends are more renowned than that of the ghost of the little girl from St. Mary's private school and Catholic Church of the Assumption. On the morning of her first communion, the little girl died from complications of measles and was burned in her holy communion dress consisting of a white gown and veil. Still dressed in her religious garments, she appears in the oldest building, which was constructed around 1917. Many visitors claim to hear her giggles in stairwells and closets. Others have seen her peeking above the window sills, looking out over the grounds, and occasionally playing around the playground. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or on YouTube at The Porter Gals or on Instagram at the underscore Portrait Gals. You can also find us wherever you get your podcast or at roguemedianetwork.com. You've been listening to The Polter Gals, a Rogue Media Network podcast. This has been a Rogue Media podcast. 